The Sign of the Beaver, Chapter 24 Matt stood looking up at the sky over the clearing. It's going to snow, he told the dog. You can feel it, can't you? The dog lifted its nose, testing the promise in the air. Matt reckoned he had been lucky so far. The heavy snows had not come. There had been flurries, thin and swirling, sifting through the trees. Many mornings he had waked to find a coating of white on the cabin roof, which would melt away under the noonday sun. Today, everything seemed different. The sky was the color of his mother's pewter plate. The brown withered leaves of the oak trees hung motionless from the branches. Three crows searched noisily among the dry corn stalks. A flock of small birds hopped nervously under the pines. It's almost Christmas, he said out loud. He could not remember for sure how many weeks belonged to each month. Sometimes he was not even certain that he had remembered to cut a notch every day. Each day was so like the day before, and Christmas Day, when it came, would not have anything to mark it from all the others. He tried to put out of his mind the thought of his mother's Christmas pudding. We'd better get in extra firewood, he said, and the dog scrambled eagerly after him. Late in the day, the snow began, soundlessly, steadily. Before dark, it had lain a white blanket over the trees and the stumps and the cabin. When Matt and the dog went outside at bedtime, the chilly whiteness reached over his moccasins and closed around his bare ankles. They were both thankful to hurry inside again. Next morning, in the darkness of the cabin, Matt made his way to the door. He could scarcely push it open. The bank of snow outside reached almost to the latch. He stared at it in alarm. Was he going to be a prisoner in his own cabin? With all his preparations, he had never thought of a shovel. His axe would be about as much use as a teaspoon. He set himself to hewing a slab of firewood to make some sort of blade. By the time he had dug a few feet of pathway, the sun was high. He stepped into a dazzling white world. Now at last, he could make use of the snowshoes that hung on the cabin wall. Eagerly, he strapped the bindings about his legs and climbed up out of the narrow path he had dug. The snowshoes held him lightly. He stood poised on the snow like a duck on water. But with his first steps, he discovered that he could not even waddle like a duck on land. The clumsy hoops got in each other's way one of them forever getting trapped beneath the other. All at once, he got the knack of it, and he wanted to shout out loud. He tramped from one of his snares to another, waiting every few minutes for the dog who floundered happily behind him. The snares were buried deep and empty, and he set them higher, just in case some animal might venture out of its burrow. Then he tramped all the way to the pond for the sheer pleasure of it. Coming back through the woods, he marveled at his own tracks, like the claw prints of a giant bird. Suddenly, he realized that he was happy, as he had never been in the weeks since a tea had gone away. He was no longer afraid of the winter ahead. The snowshoes had set him free. The cabin was warm and welcoming. He melted snow in his kettle and made a tea of tips of emlock. He shelled and crushed a handful of acorns and boiled them with a strip of pumpkin. Afterwards, for the first time in weeks, he took down Robinson Crusoe. Reading by the firelight, he felt drowsy and contented. Life on a warm island in the Pacific might be easier, but tonight, Matt thought, that he wouldn't for a moment have given up his snug cabin buried in the snow. And we'll read chapter 25 next time. In the meantime, until then, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Thanks so much for listening. Love you guys. Bye-bye.